Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Spring Boot Security episode. Today we are going to continue what we've just learned in the previous episodes and we are going to finish the implementation for our database authentication feature. So we are going to integrate the principal uh, user and um, uh, user principal detail service into the Spring Security configuration. And at the end of this video we will be able to use uh, our application using Spring Security and we are going to store users in the database. We're going to use the database authentication mechanism. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Just fired up IntelliJ and I'm going directly to the Spring Security configuration. And basically what we'll do is we want to replace this part. So up until now, we used in-memory authentication and we defined these users, you know, in, in memory. And we want to replace this implementation with the database authentication feature that we've been working on for the past couple of episodes. So, um, if you remember, we have this user principal, we have the user principal detail service that is functional, and now we need to integrate uh, our own implementation into a security configuration mechanism. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Well, the first thing is you want to create a bin of type uh, DAO authentication provider because you're using the database. I'm just going to name it authentication provider and let's create a new one. So uh, DAO authentication provider, um, DAO, okay, equals new database authentication provider. And now I want to set, for example, I want to set the password encoder. Okay, so password encoder because our authentication provider needs to use uh, the password encoder. Now by default the in-memory authentication uses it, you know, scans and uses it by default, but when we build our custom auth provider we need to specify what encoder we want to use and we use the bcrypt password encoder just as we did up until now. And we also need to set, you see, the user details service. Now the user details service is the service that we've been working on. So this means that we also need a bean definition for that service. So it's we are going to call it um, user details service. User details service user details service and we are going to return new user details user principal details service okay and we have to use the user repository for it and in fact let me just create this right here private um, in fact, what I could do, just to simplify things even more, I could go to the user principal details service, you know, and I could annotate it with service, okay? So, uh, by doing this, I will have this bean right here, but unfortunately, you know, I need to kind of obtain it. So, I'm not going to do this. What I am going to do though is I'm going to auto wire it directly in my security configuration. Okay, so I will have private user principal detail service, user principal detail service, and I'm going to use construction auto wiring, and then I can pass it directly, you know, this uh, user principal de detail service. Okay, so now I have configured my DAO authentication provider and of course I need to return it and we are ready to use it in the configure method so just to explain it again uh, I went to my user detail service I added this service annotation which is going to enable this component to be eligible for auto wiring and then in my security configuration I'm creating a new bin an authentication provider, a DAO authentication provider, and we need to pass it the password encoder, okay, which is generated here, and also the user detail service, which is 
uh, you know, auto, which is injected directly into the security configuration. Now, another approach would have been to create a new bin and define our user detail service in the same class, but, you know, it's just two ways of doing the same thing. So I've chosen the, let's say, uh, easier way. Cool. Now, we need to remove all this. And what we can do is say authentication provider and now I'm going to pass in the bean that we've just created and I don't need this exception anymore and that's all we need to do to integrate uh, our custom user principal service with Spring Security. So right now we don't have an in-memory authentication but we are using an authentication provider and we are using this authentication provider defined here which uses the password encoder and our own custom implementation for the user principal details service. Cool. Uh, now I will, let's see if everything works as expected. I just fired up the application and let's open a new incognito window, navigate to it and see if everything is working as planned. Okay, we'll proceed to localhost and let's say I want to access the admin feature. Okay, so admin and now we have admin123 because we see it our database with three users. Click sign in and apparently it did, not, it did not work. Now, how can we debug this? Okay, well, I started my application in debug mode and the quickest way to debug your app is to put a breakpoint somewhere in the implementation of the detail service because this is where the user is actually extracted by the password and this is where you can put a breakpoint and navigate uh, step by step into the authentication process. Okay, so I'm gonna type admin, admin123 again, I will hit the breakpoint. So I have my user, my user is retrieved correctly but if you look at the password, you know it's admin123, it's in, it's in plain text and we are using a password encoder now in the spring security our authentication provider uses you know a, a bcrypt password encoder so what i'm thinking now is that when we seeded our users in the database we did not encode the password and if we go here to db in it we can see that you know the password is in clear text so we did not use the same encoder to encode it and that's the reason why or authentication fails. Now, of course, we kind of need to fix this because otherwise it will not work. And I want to show you this because, you know, when you integrate database authentication, you know, there are a couple of things that can go wrong and you need to, you know, put a breakpoint and see exactly uh, the authentication scheme. So, I just want to clear all the users up front so that we can start fresh. And now, we need a password encoder, so private password encoder we'll inject this in the constructor because we need it and now we have to use you know the password encoder encode and we need to encode all the passwords in here when we save them to the database encode admin123 and then password encoder encode manager one to three cool now let's run our application in debug mode again and see if our database authentication works okay we'll give our app a couple of seconds Cool. And now I'm going to reload this app. I'm going to admin. So admin, admin123, sign in. Okay, we can look at the user and now we see that the password has been encoded successfully and we have roles and permissions. The user principal is going to be, okay, I'm gonna jump this. Okay, we have the user principal, 
and now let's see if we are directed to the admin page we are so this is successful we can view our profile we can view our admin you know we can view management because we are an admin so everything appears to be working let me just restart the application and try to log in as a different user and see if the permission mechanism works but other than that it seems that everything is okay so uh, the app just loaded I'm going to reopen the new incognito window local host 882 okay we are redirected to a secure connection so profile I say Dan Dan 123 standard user I'm signing in I'm able to see the profile but I'm not able to see uh, the admin page so the roles are working our database authentication is working so we have now completely finished this feature before we close I just want to take a couple of minutes to speak about two more things the first one um, I want to mention the complete decoupling of the storage mechanism for user management and the actual uh, authentication method so we have been using we have been storing users in memory and in the database and we have used HTTP basic as an authentication mechanism and these things are completely decoupled so uh, what I want to say is that you can use a database a file in memory a cloud service and you can mix it uh, with any uh, authentication method that's available in Spring now HTTP forms GVT and so on and so forth and in the future episodes we are going to focus on form based authentication but what we did up until now is still going to be valid so the HTTPS uh, feature is going to be the same the database authentication provider is going to remain the same these things are completely decoupled from the security authentication method that we choose to implement in our own app so everything that we discussed up until now is still going to be valid we are just going to you know change this bit over here and we are going to use form based authentication and gvt tokens instead of http basic that's the first thing uh, the second thing is uh, we now have a lot of security classes and what I like to do is I want to create a new package for them just to keep all the security related uh, configuration in one place so I have a new package I call it security and I kind of want to move all the security classes you know in here so I can have them in one package and grouped um, at the same level okay now that being said that's enough for today's episode before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye